Hey guys, I'm CrazyCatter42, and welcome to my top 12 dungeons, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. A Link to the Past, the third Zelda game in the series, made for the Super Nintendo, and some consider it to be the best game in the series. It's also got 12 dungeons, which makes it tied for the most of the series, tied along with A Link Between Worlds and the Treatyas, which is its spiritual successor. And today, I'm going to be ranking those dungeons from worst to best, in my opinion. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. At number 12 is Skullwoods. The game of this dungeon is that there's multiple entrances, so if you know what you're doing, you can skip some section of the dungeon, which is pretty cool. Then we have the item, which is the Fire Rod, which is a pretty awesome item. Unfortunately, those are the only things I like about this dungeon. First of all, this dungeon's got Wall Masters, which I hate with a passion. This dungeon's also got a lot of spike traps, which can be kind of annoying. Then we got the boss, Mottler, who isn't really hard himself, just the room you fight him in is so annoying. It's full of conveyor belts and there's spike traps all over the place, so you're most likely going to die to those than the boss itself. And those are the main reasons why Skullwood is at the bottom of this list. And number 11 is the Eastern Palace. Now this is the second dungeon in the game, and it's really easy. The puzzles are all really simple, and the boss is pretty easy too, and not that fun. So overall, that's my main problem with the dungeon. It's too easy, but it's one of the early ones, so I guess that's the way it has to be. On the bright side, you do get the bow here, which is pretty awesome. And number 10 is Misery Mire. Now the game of this dungeon is it's like a maze with multiple paths in each room, which is pretty cool and unique. The dungeon item of this dungeon is the King of Samaria, which can create a block, which is only used once in this entire dungeon to put a block on a switch. Yeah, I kind of wish the item was used a bit more in this dungeon. Then we got the boss dungeon, it's pretty cool and pretty fun to fight, and it's a little challenging. So overall this dungeon is pretty good, I just wish the item was used a bit more. At number 9 is Hyrule Castle. Cool thing about this dungeon is that you get to visit it twice. On the first visit you explore the basins of the castle, and you get to fight this armoured yellow guy who has a ball and chain, which is pretty neat. On the second visit you explore the upper levels of the castle, fighting many, many, many soldiers, and then you get your first battle against the evil wizard Agahim, and you fight him by playing tennis. So overall this dungeon is pretty cool. Up next is the first Dark World dungeon, the Palace of Darkness. First of all, in order to get this dungeon, you must pay a monkey money in order to open it for you. Which is pretty awesome, because come on, monkeys equal awesome. Now this dungeon is similar to Eastern Palace, only more challenging, with better puzzles and enemies. We also got the Magic Hammer in this dungeon, which is pretty awesome. Not sure why it's called the Magic Hammer, because it's like a plain ordinary hammer, but whatever. And then we have the boss, the Helmel Sword King, who's a pretty fun boss. Overall, this dungeon is pretty good. At number 7 is Thieves Town. The first four rooms of this dungeon make up a multi floor maze, which is pretty cool, hiding all sorts of little secrets for you to find. Near the end of this dungeon, you rescue a little girl, who later turns out to be none other than the boss, which is a pretty interesting plot twist, which later gets reused in Phantom Hourglass. You also got the Titan Myths in this dungeon, which is pretty neat, I guess. At number 6 is the final dungeon of the game, Ganon's Tower. Now anyone who's watched my previous dungeon rankings knows that I love to climb towers, and this one does not disappoint. Lots of interesting and slightly difficult puzzles that put you to the test. You also get to refight all the light world bosses, which is pretty cool, because you get to test your U equipment against them. You also get to refight Agahim, it's a little trickier this time because you can make clones, and once you beat him, 
you learn he's actually Ganon. Who then runs off to the Pyramid of Power where you have your final battle against him. So overall, this dungeon is a perfect example of what a final dungeon is supposed to be. Speaking of towers, up next is the Tower of Hera. The main gimmick of this dungeon are these fences, which you have to switch around by hitting switches, which is pretty cool. There are also these pits, which if you fall into, they'll drop you down to lower falls of the tower, which is pretty interesting. What's not pretty interesting is that they're also in the boss battle room, and if you fall down one of those pits, you'd restart the entire boss fight, which gets really old really fast. Other than that though, this dungeon is pretty cool. Ah, number four is Turtle Rock. Now remember that Kano and Mario we got in Misery Mario? They used that one little switch puzzle. Well, it gets a lot more use in this dungeon because you great elevators to ride around on, which are pretty cool. Some people complain about this dungeon being too hard, but I honestly find it very easy. The enemies and puzzles are pretty simple enough. Like the only way I guess this dungeon being difficult is if you run out of magic. As long as you keep your eye on your magic, you should be okay. Then we get the boss, you have to use your fire and ice rod again, so overall this dungeon is pretty fun in my opinion. At number 3 is the Desert Palace. Now this is the third dungeon of the game, but unlike Eastern Palace, this dungeon is actually a bit of a challenge with some tricky enemies and some sort of tricky puzzles. So that's pretty awesome. The boss is also a bit more challenging and a lot more fun than the one that's in Eastern Palace. It's also got multiple entrances, kind of like Skullwoods. Overall this dungeon is pretty awesome, which is why it's at number 3 on this list. At number 2 is the Swamp Palace. And the gimmick of this dungeon is draining water from one room to the next so you can get further. This may seem hard, but it's actually really easy. All you gotta do is hit a switch and the water will be moved from one room to the other. So it's really easy. You also get the hook shadow dungeon, which is one of the best solder items ever, so that automatically makes this dungeon really awesome. Then we got the boss's dungeon, who's pretty cool I guess. Although I'll admit, his second phase is complete bull. Anyway, I really like this dungeon. There's one dungeon I like a little bit more than this one. And my favorite dungeon in Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past is the Ice Palace. Now for those of you who don't know, I really like ice basics. I just love slipping around on ice. I think it's so much fun while other people think it's annoying. Although I will admit, that bit with the stairs, I do find that part annoying. This dungeon has got some really cool puzzles and some cool enemies. Even that puzzle we had to push that block down a few floors, I thought that one was actually pretty interesting, even though it took me a little trouble the first time. Even the boss dungeon is pretty cool, I think it was a lot of fun and it's a little bit of a challenge. Anyway, this is why it's my favourite dungeon in Link to the Past. Thank you for watching, I'm Kata 42 and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, if you liked that video, give it a big ol' thumbs up. And if you want to stay updated when I release more videos, subscribe. And if you want to see some more Zelda-related videos, click one of the thumbnails on the screen.